Good morning, everyone. So let us begin. Today's topic is about SAP testing. So testing is important activity. And testing is important part of SAP life cycle. So whenever we are engaged with SAP implementation, so testing is very important. So testing in SAP implementation life cycle is an important event. So I want to talk about different type of testing, different terms, different different terminologies, different type of testing, what is being done, what kind of testing is been done, different test environment. So I want to talk about all of them. So that is our agenda for today. So testing, to make sure that all the transactions, all the functions, all the features, which is working properly or not working properly. So that is what Testing is about making sure that all of our transactions, all of our program is standard and custom, is working properly. That is where SAP testing come into the picture. So SAP testing SAP testing is involved with Testing SAP standard transactions. So we have a different transactions. We learned different transactions, customer, vendor, invoice, this, that. So we did different transactions. So those different transactions and also custom programs. When we are implementing SAP, there are also many, many custom programs, different kind of custom program. Custom program means the program which is written specifically for that customer. So when we're doing the testing, we do the test. So SAP standard transactions working as per the need, and then custom transactions are working as per the need. So how both of them are working. Normally, when we are doing the testing, so important point, so testing is very fine. Functionality, of SAP 
<coughs> standard transactions and custom transactions or custom programs against business requirement. So that is very important. Now, I always like to talk about all these methodologies and all different topics because when you go on a project, it is possible that you go on a project in six months or eight months or four months or three months or nine months or whatever month, and your primary activity is only testing. It is possible. You are not doing any configuration at all. It is possible. You may not even have access to the configuration at all. That is possible. So many people many times think that when we go on SAP projects and only thing we are doing is configuration. That may not necessarily be true. Configuration is one part of the responsibility, but that is not the entire thing. There are many activities, many tasks, which you may be getting involved when you're working on an actual project. And one of the important activity and task when you go on the project is the testing. So testing is very important. <clears throat> I have seen uh, many consultants went on a project, and on the project, only thing which they are testing, nothing else. There are certain terms which we need to know. So first is testing is mandatory process. You cannot go live without testing because testing is verification. Sometimes it is required by law, like FD approvals, etc. In pharma companies and all that. So many times, so that is why testing is uh, mandatory. Of course, you will never have any project which go live without testing. Sometimes it is even required by the law. So many times we do the testing and that testing is required by the law. So for example, in the pharma, you're doing the, you know, testing and FD approval and you, you, to do, you need to do this testing and that is required by the law. Testing can be done anytime. There could be testing methodology. So when you go on a project, there is something called testing methodology. Testing approach. Document, etc. Now what is it? This is normally defined by program management and project management because testing how we're going to do testing how many cycle of testing what kind of a testing all those different things are predefined there is a predefined approach there is a predefined methodology even the logistics is being defined where you want to do testing which room and how will be doing who is my tester how many how many people will be involved what is the duration how many cycle, how much each of these cycle gonna take, 
how many scenarios. So you have all those things are predefined. Normally, definition of the testing methodology and testing approach is defined by the project management team. They come up with this approach, they come up with this method, they come up with this uh, defining, and normally there is a document. There is a document. SE can be done anytime. Normally, in S in a SAP world, when we do testing, so as per ASAP implementation methodology. This is the methodology for uh, implementation of the project. Okay. Implementation methodology. There are following phases. of SAP implementation end-to-end -end cycle. In that, the first phase, we call it a <coughs> project progression. Next phase is called a business blueprinting. Following phase is called realization or build phase. Then we have a something called Final preparation. <clears throat> and then we have co live and support. So, normally, <clears throat> these are the five phases of implementation. Now, in the project preparation, this is normally the project kickoff. <clears throat> Defining the team, the structure, etc. So this is the important phase, project profession. That is where the project is start. Business blueprinting is very critical phase. That is where we gather, we document, and uh, get approval of all business requirements. Business blueprinting is very, very important. And why it is important? Because during this phase, we will have Business requirement being captured. Okay. That is where we can do business blueprinting. <clears throat> then we can do realization. Realization phase basically means
we do the configuration we need to develop any custom programs and we need to do testing many other activity i'm talking at the high level so the testing is done during the build phase after solution has been configured developed if you have any custom program because unfortunately in the real world there is also many many custom programs i think uh, so that's where the configuration happens <clears throat> you develop any custom program and uh, we do the testing then we have final prep normally in the final prep uh, we migrate the data we provide the uh, training to users we provide training to the users and then obviously <clears throat> we provide continuous support and enhancements this is end to end cycle at the high level of course there is a lot of other detail <clears throat> and this is where the testing happens and that is where we have a test and that is what we are focusing and that is what we are talking about i would like you guys to make a note of these end to end implementation process so you understand how the end to end implementation works so please make a note of this so we are doing testing testing is to detect failures detect issues engage requirement detect problem detect solution not working as per the need that is what testing is about testing and that is where the testing come into the picture what testing is not testing is not to gather the business requirement it just to find the facts is to find that whether this is working or not working if it has any problems if there are any issues that is what testing is about testing is not about gathering business requirements
there are a couple of terminologies. One is called bugs. So the bug uh, is a terminology which is used when you go on the testing. When you're doing testing, bug basically means a problem. An error. A flaw. A mistake in the program. A failure. And that could be in SAP transaction where well, this transaction is not working the way it is supposed to work, etc., etc., etc. Or it's a bug because in SAP system or custom program, it is not <clears throat> providing correct result. It is providing incorrect result. It is providing unexpected result. And it causes to behave differently. It causes to behave in, in a way it is not supposed to. So that is where we have bugs. So make a note of that term called bug. So that is where this bug, this term, come into the picture. Then there is a process called debugging. Make a note of that also. Debugging, then how to fix that bug? How to correct the problem? Debugging can be done different ways. We have to do reconfiguration. If it's a custom program, then we need to get custom program corrected. So debugging can be done in many different ways. In SAP, in SAP, there is a debugger programmer. Debugger transaction code. And the transaction code is slash H. Slash H. Slash H is the transaction code which you can use in SAP to run a program in a debugging mode. Running a program in a debugging mode. We can order this transaction code that is called slash H. This is SAP transaction code. Normally, there is not a problem in the standard transactions, but when you're writing a custom program. <clears throat> so custom programs do have a problem. Custom programs do get failed. Custom program normally has a box. It's very obvious. Okay, so that is where we are debugger and transaction code like slash h and others which you can run in SAP. Test case. Now there are certain uh, terminologies which I would like you guys to be aware of. So there is something called S scenario. or test case. Okay. Test scenario represents a specific business scenario. 
It represents a special business scenario. So we are doing a test case. We are doing incoming payment. We are doing outgoing payment. We are doing customer invoice. We are doing vendor invoice. We are doing sales order processing. We are doing purchase order processing. We are doing good receipt. We are doing good issues. We are doing inventory transfer. We are doing this posting. We are doing that posting. So you have many, many specific business scenarios. Those business scenarios are identified upfront. Idea is to identify to identify all business, all test scenarios to cover all business requirements. So we need to identify all test scenarios to cover all business requirements. So there could be you know 10 business scenarios, there could be 20 business scenarios, there could be 100 business scenarios, there could be 200 business scenarios, there could be 500 business scenarios. You can have many, many, many business scenarios. And all business scenarios, now we need 100 or we need 50, we need 200. That is defined on the basis of my business requirements. The overall idea of identifying test scenario and test cases that we must identify all business requirements. So, all business requirements all business requirements can be completely can be completely tested and verified so that is the idea that all business requirements are completely tested and verified. That is the ground rule. That is the ground rule. Make a note of this. Now, I would like to show you some uh, scenario. This is just an example. If you see that here, there is also a script ID. A script ID. So there is also a term called test script. Test script is a document which describes. A test scenario or a test case. So we have a test scenario, we have a test case, and that is being defined in a test script. So test script defines it. Okay.
Now, this is the, an actual example of a test script. So what are you looking at right now is an example of an actual real world test script. Every test script has an ID. That ID could be whatever. That ID could be whatever. Anything we can use as far as this ID is concerned. Okay. This is the name of the scenario. That what does this scenario describe? This tells me what does the scenario describe? This is the example of a scenario. A standard end to end sales order without eliciting any custom code and oddball situation. This is the name, whatever that is. This is the name. This is the name. Okay. Okay. Now here, first and foremost, we identify there is something called this order type. In this, uh, there is order type. This this is going to work for this sales organization. This is going to work for this distribution channel. This is going to work for this division. This is going to work for this customer. This is going to work for this material. This is going to be item. This is going to another material. This is going to another quantity. This is going to another material. All these different things. All these different things. These are called identification of the master data. So when we are testing a scenario, the testing scenario. The testing scenario is identified upfront. This testing scenario is identified upfront. And this test scenario will work for what order, what organization unit, what customer, what material, what quantity. Because this scenario may not work for every customer. This scenario may not work for every item. This order may not work for all sales organization. This order may not work for all organization units. You prescribe that. You identify that. That when we are gonna run this scenario, this scenario will run for this data. Because this scenario may not be relevant for all data, may not be relevant for all sales org. This scenario is relevant in in uh, in, uh, in in uh, in in Canada, but not in US or vice versa. It's relevant for this customer badly group, but not for other customers, or maybe for all customers, but maybe for unique customers, maybe for certain kind of a customers, for certain type of items. So that is very important when you're doing testing. That when you're doing testing, what this scenario is relevant to. That relevance could be organization unit, that relevance could be master data, that relevance could be for any kind of customer material, etc., etc., etc. Okay, that is where 
this come into the picture So that is where the testing comes into the picture. Now, if you look at here, here we have a something called business scenario. And now look at here. In this scenario, you have a different test steps. So test steps. So what are this basically means? Test steps. One test script or test scenario or case may have one or more than one step in Make a note of that. Okay. Test case. Test is step. Now here we have a step one, a step two, and if I go down, go down. In this uh, scenario, in this test script for this scenario, we have a twenty-five steps. So in order to test this scenario end to end, we have 25 steps. Now let's understand this. So here, this is my step number one. This is an actual test script. This is a test script from the real world. This is not any fictitious test script. Okay. So here we can have a scenario ID UTC dash SO dot zero zero one. This is the description of the step. We can create a sales order of the three line item of it. When it's good step, inventory is available to ship to. This is the transaction code we run. This is SAP transaction code. <clears throat> we use this transaction code in our example also. Then we were doing FI and SD integration. At so that time, we use this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this transaction code. Security ID. Who will do this testing? So order processor is the name of that security ID. <clears throat> That person will do. Then we have an input. So in this testing ID, we're gonna do an order type this. We're gonna do sales area this, this, this. We're gonna use this customer. We're gonna use this material, quantity 10, this material, quantity 10, this material, quantity 10. What is expected result? So expected result is when we save order. So expected result is we save order. Order saves and order confirmation generated. What is the actual result? So actual result is sales order saved. This is sales order number. Created three line material can't be created, delivered due to lead time was changed by someone. But this is actual result. Which team does go to CAD? What was the name of the programmer, uh, tester? This was the name of the programmer, uh, tester. We did a retesting. This was the sales order number in retesting. What was the result? It passed. So ultimately, it is passed. Okay. 
And now if you see here, there's a grand color, finance. There's a finance steps in it. This is validate data on sales order. Gonna use this transaction code. Actual result is this. Checking the pricing done by the finance to manage team, done by this person. And if you go further down, these are all different steps. And when all these different steps are done, then we are done with our one, one scenario. One scenario is approved or not approved. This is uh, FTM, execute this transaction, do this, do this, do this. And who will do? This person will do. Okay. And that is what we see here. And this is end to end. Example of a test case, example of a test scenario. And there could be many, many such test scenarios, dozens and dozens and dozens of such scenario could be exist depending upon your scope. And then you will be testing. Now, there is something called testing tools. Testing tools. In testing tool, there are several testing tools are available in the marketplace. Available in market. Many of them. There is something called HPQC, HP Quality Center. Now that is called uh, HP ALM, HP that you will pack up, ALM is application lifecycle management. And there are many other actually. There are many other. I'm not overly concerned that um, you go through all these different uh, you know, testing tools and all that. And uh, but I think uh, so we can have a different testing tool where you can do different kind of a testing. But I, I'm not overly concerned that as an SAP person that you need to know each and all, each and every, um, uh, each of each each and every product, uh, these um, testing tool, there are quite a few of them are available if you want. Uh, there are so many material and uh, videos and all that available on HPQC. Now it is called HPLM. So if you want to get some acquaintance, you can watch some videos and all that. But ultimately, if you look at here, this is the test case. This is an actual, actual example of a test scenario and test script. This is an actual test script for a scenario. Now this test script, which you are looking here, is an Excel sheet. So this is an Excel sheet. Now, apart from putting this into Excel sheet, you can also put this in some tool. You can put this Excel sheet. You can define the same test cases and test scenarios in similar fashion in HPQC also. But the meaning, the purpose, the definition remain same. That doesn't change. That remain constant. 
that is important point to understand so if you want to get some uh, tools there are many of them but hpq chplm a lot of people do use hp is for uh, he will packard because he will packard own it qc means quality control hplm is he will packard uh, application life cycle management it's a new version of it um, and some people use it some people don't use it it depends uh, but you know if you want to familiarize a lot of junk a lot of material is available on on different sites and you can obviously use this product and get a content but the idea is whether you use excel sheet or whether you use any other application um, we need to understand test scenarios test case and test escape test step bug those terms and terminologies and concepts we need to be aware of. That is important one. So, and there, there are many tools. So how many tools you will understand? How many tools uh, you will continue to learn? It is just not possible because there's so many of them. So I'm not overly concerned about too many tools because there are too many tools basically mean they are different softwares which are available in the market, uh, maybe HP, QC is the most commonly used. A lot of people use HPQC. There are many others also. But how many you will keep learning because there are so many of them. So not too much concern about that. There is something called test plan. Test plan. Make a note of this line item. Test plan. So test plan is a strategic document that will be used to verify and ensure that SAP system meets its design specification or the requirement. Plan. So sometimes we create a uh, testing plan. Plan tells me how we're going to verify. It's a separate document. Normally, you, you would not be creating a test plan. Test plan is normally done by the program management team. Okay. That is what the program management and test management team does. You may not necessarily be doing this. It's just that for you to be aware of the terminology. So you're familiar with certain terminology. So make a note of that term called test plan. Okay. Test plan. Now let's talk about some of the terms. So there is something called unit testing. Okay. Unit testing. Unit testing is normally make a note done at a transaction code level so many many transactions which we have learned for you know customer vendor this that this invoice that invoice various transaction code we learn so in the unit test we are Verifying testing a individual transaction code. That verification of individual transaction code is called unit testing. Take a note of that term. This is normally done by consultants or developers. So normally, unit testing would be done by consultants or developers. Okay, unit testing. Then we will have something called terminology called integration testing. Okay. 
integration testing is done for a test script which will have multiple transaction codes and multiple steps this is end to end testing scenario for a specific business requirement so that is called integration testing that is called integration test that is called integration test this is a example of a integration this is example of integration scenario this is example of integration test script which i showed it to you integration testing may also include non sap systems applications steps in it so many time what happens is when we are doing end to end test scenario at that time in end to end test scenario we may also have a many time in the real world what happens is understand this is important point do not think that when you are doing end to end testing you are only doing for the sap system in the real world fortunately or unfortunately there are many many non sap applications also sap is just one of the application you in fact end up having many many non sap steps also a lot of non non uh, sap applications also like we were talking about uh, that uh, external uh, test application uh, for taxation you know we were about tax and tax payer and all those different applications now when we are having all those different applications then when you are doing end to end testing you will be doing the testing for those uh, scenarios also for those uh, applications also you are integrating uh, to with the bank you are integrating with some external uh, freight forwarding system you are integrating sap with some third party application so when that happens you are also integrating sap to the lot of other non sap applications also because in the real world when company using sap they also use many many other non sap applications also and because of that when you are doing integration scenario end to end when you are doing integration testing end to end you have to make sure that okay when you are doing end to end testing then you also know that you would be testing those steps as well 
that is where integration testing come into the picture in integration testing you are not only testing sap steps you are also testing non sap test as well which may be non sap people involved with that understand that is a very important point because when we are doing the end to end testing it does not only need sap steps it also mean lot of non sap steps as well okay so that is a very important point to understand so in the test script you will also have uh, many many other non hcp test steps as well who does this integration testing integration testing normally is done by integration testing normally is done by business people but in some cases it is also could be done by consultants not preferred consultant should not do unit integration testing it should be done by the business people but many time it happens business is not available lack of resources business is busy they don't have a bandwidth many such things happen and if those things happen then in those cases integration testing can also be done by business people as well so that is where the integration testing come into the picture so that is the integration testing then by the business user there is also user acceptance testing user acceptance testing is nothing but integration testing but must be done by business users done by the business users okay. so user acceptance testing is nothing but the integration testing but is mandatorily done by the business users otherwise it is then uat is nothing but the integration testing actually so primary difference between integration testing and user acceptance testing is the user acceptance testing because it has a term user so that is done by the business users business users would be doing this integration testing that is the primary region of user acceptance test integration testing can be done by the users or can be done by the consultant if you are doing user acceptance testing then it is basically done by the business user mandatorily okay done by the business users mandatorily then we have a something called regression testing regression testing we can note of that term called regression testing regression testing now regression testing is basically regression testing is done by and now where the regression testing come into the picture so regression testing making sure an existing program has not impacted due to some other changes for example version upgrade
वर्जन अपग्रेड Now, what is the meaning of the version updated? So, I have everything working fine. My whole program is working. My all transaction working. My system is working fine. My interface is working fine. My custom program working fine. Everything is working fine. But we have just done a SAP version change. We are using the version 4.7. Now, for the version 4.7, we went to 5.4. Or we were using 5.0. Now we went to 6.0. Everything is okay, but we just put some patches. We have put some patches, and because we have put some patches, we would like to know that because of those application of the patches, because of those version upgrades. my rest of the program has not impacted that is where the regression testing come into the picture make a note of that term called regression testing regression testing regression testing we have something of there are some additional terms these are just mostly to familiarize you with the some terms and all that so something called black box testing make a note of that term called black box testing and uh, 1 2 3 4 make a note of these four terms make a note of these four terms please. so we call it sap black box now black box basically means when the testing is done by the people who has no idea about that software so normally the sap testing is done by the people who has no idea what is sap they only business people so normally integration testing is can also be called now why i am giving all these terminology is because when you go on a project A lot of these terminology being thrown around: black box testing, this testing, that testing, regression testing, integration testing, user acceptance testing, unit testing, test case, test scenario, test plan. So overall idea is that you get an idea, you get an overview and knowledge of some of these terms and terminologies. And every project is kind of a unique. Every project has their own terms. Every project has their own terminology. Every project has their own, you know, ways of doing different things. So that is what a lot of people do. So we have a black box testing, and in the black box testing is basically is done by the people who has no idea what is SAP, what SAP works, and they are doing the testing. they basically test their performance they check the security they check their functions it is working fine is reliable what is the overall features whether the functions of the sap features are doing what we require we are matching uh, business requirements uh, across our resolution and based upon those business requirements we are also making sure that you know we go back and uh, we are approving all those different applications so check testing function checking capability checking security checking performance performance is important too security is important too now if you look at here in my example there is a security id is there this column security id security id basically means if somebody can create a sales order who can create a sales order not everybody can create a sales order So sales order can only be created by certain set of people. So they are assigned to a security ID. Who can do it, and also verify who can not do it. So verification of security ID is one of the important aspects because in the real world, like like when you are learning in the class, you have all these different different transactions and different. You know, you can do this transaction, you can do that transaction, and many people can do many transactions. but that could be a problem from the real world perspective 
because from the real world perspective you may not like everybody to do every transaction because that will be chaos so you check security id who can do it order processor can do this stuff no one else when we are testing can we do an order we are also testing can this id can do or not do so there is a term called black box testing then there is also a terminology called white box testing make a note of this term called white box testing and then uh, you know some of these terms which is written on the paper i will explain to them as well okay so white box box testing white box testing so white box testing is done from the coding perspective done from the consultant perspective could be a functional consultant could be a technical consultant so white box testing is equivalent to a unit testing so white box testing is done by the consultant functional consultant programmers developers coders technical team functional team so all those different teams does white box testing so software is internal tested from the coding perspective done by the technical team programmers developers there is also gray box testing that is another term a lot of people use called gray box testing make a note of these terms also which is see at your screen so what is the gray box testing so gray box testing is basically related to gray box okay so gray box testing basically means when you are combining black box and white box so when you bring black box and white got together that is like a gray box test that is like integration testing so integration testing is called gray box testing in which you have a uh, black box and gray box label both you are doing functional testing also you are doing also technical testing you are also doing business testing so you combine all of them that is called gray box testing then there is also something called positive testing and also negative testing positive testing and also something called negative testing positive positive testing positive testing basically means making sure program is doing making sure program is doing what it is supposed to do for a scenario for a business requirement so you have a business requirement and for that business requirement you are very fine so for that business requirement you are very fine so for that business requirement 
you're tested to certain situations. Okay. So this can do this and making sure that can be done in that fashion. Positive testing, what it can do, and it is doing that, positive. I'm able to, as per my ID, I'm authorized to do order. As per my ID, I'm able to post invoice. If I'm able to post invoice because I'm authorized for posting invoice, then I'm doing a positive testing. I'm doing a positive testing because for a scenario, I'm able to do what I'm supposed to do and it is doing it. I'm supposed to enter invoice and then I'm able to do that invoice. Positive test. Negative testing. So negative testing, for example, I'm not supposed to create an order and then I verify whether I can do that invoice or not. That is negative testing. So I'm not authorized. I am not authorized for doing posting a vendor invoice or customer invoice. And because I'm not authorized, I want to make sure that I'm not able to do, not able to do. That is negative testing. Not able to do what a function I am not supposed to do. I want to make sure that what I'm supposed to do, I can do positive, and I want to make sure that what I'm not supposed to do, I am not able to do. So there is a positive testing, and there is also negative testing. So we do both positive testing and negative. There is also something called uh, GUI. GUI basically means a uh, graphical user interface. So in the graphical user interface, basically, you are verifying the user interface. Whether the user interface is fine, whether the user interface is not fine, whether user interface look and feel is okay, we can navigate properly, function is fine. Is doing business requirements, business functions, what function is supposed to do. But we want to know that that the GUI, which it's supposed to do, whether that GUI is this is doing or this is not doing. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. So this is what I want to talk today and we'll talk tomorrow. So this is an important topic, uh, testing. And uh, so thank you very much. Talk to you guys tomorrow. We'll have a new topic tomorrow. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.